So today I'm doing a simple overclocking tutorial on the RTX 3070 Founders Edition. So I have NVIDIA's default card. This is by any means no factory overclock card. Um, as you can see, I downloaded the tool called MSI Afterburner, and I believe I downloaded the beta. I put the link in the description down below if you guys need to download this tool. And then I also have GPU-Z just to see clock speeds and you can read sensors and power draw and stuff like that. Um, I'm also using the Rivetuner statistics server to view the GPU clock speeds and frequencies and CPU temperatures in the benchmark when we run it. Um, but you by no means need to set that up and um, there's easy tutorials online to get that up and running at a good level. Um, so what I do when I first start overclocking is just run a baseline to see what score you get. So we're going to be using 3D Mark, um, and we're going to use the Port Royale because it's a hybrid benchmark. It does ray tracing on the RTX cores and also does rasterization on CUDA cores. Um, so we'll just do a baseline right now. And it's always good to get a good baseline just to make sure that everything's set up in your system properly. You have plenty of sufficient airflow in your case and your power connectors are plugged in all the way so you're not getting any crashing on just stock speeds or your card isn't bad, you don't have memory um, artifacts or GPU crashing on the stock settings. Because there's no reason to overclock your hardware if it can't even run at the stock settings. As you can see, we got 7,705 stock. Um, that's probably not the most accurate score because we're running shadow play to record this video. Um, but overall, there is no crashing or any artifacting issues. So I believe we can get into the overclocking. Um, so the first thing you want to do in MSI Afterburner is click on this little settings cogwheel underneath the fan speed modifier. This then opens up a general tab, and there's two little check mark boxes down here you should check. Um, unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. So this allows you to actually control this voltage slider, as you can see over here on the top side of MSI Afterburner control panel. So we have to click apply, and then click yes, we want to reset the application. And now we can modify the core voltage slider percentage. I already modified this before, so this must have read the old settings, but you can just drag this all the way up to 100%. And if you're on the stock BIOS, this is by no means going to wreck your card. Um, it's only gonna overvolt your card probably by 8%, so it shouldn't cause any damage. And then you wanna drag these power limit and temp limit degrees Celsius. Um, this allows more throttling of the GPU or I should say it means it allows a bigger headroom to prevent thermal throttling and power limit throttling. 
Um, and then the core clock down here, um, we can start off with a good amount. Um, probably plus 100 megahertz on this one. It's from settings I've tried out before. And we'll go 1200 on the memory. Um, and I'm not going to make you guys watch the rest of these Port Royal benchmarks. I'll probably be speeding them up through the rest of this video. see um, we crashed so when you crash in a benchmark it either means two things your core clock megahertz is overclocked too high or your memory clock megahertz is overclocked too high well we noticed that we were able to run a successful benchmark the first time with a plus 100 megahertz core clock and a plus 1200 megahertz memory clock so I believe that our core clock is just a little bit too high since it was stable the first time. I mean, by no means, if you're able to run this benchmark and get through it, your overclock is stable. So you want to run this a couple times once you um, narrow down to a good manual overclock result. Um, that'll just give you good stability in games if you can run this multiple times because you don't want to be crashing when you're on like a 10 kill streak in Call of Duty, for example. Um, it's just not fun to have a instable GPU clock. Um, there's also another way you can overclock too, if you don't want to manually overclock. Um, I'm just manually overclocking for the purpose of this video. Um, anybody can do the auto overclock as well. Um, so what you do is there's this little icon up here with an OC and a magnifying glass. This is the NVIDIA OC scanner. Um, so what I would do for the OC scanner is um, I would just push reset on this to clear your clocks. Um, drag your core voltage all the way up in your power limit and your temp limit all the way up. Um, then just apply that. Um, then you can go up here to OC scanner. And you can click scan. Sometimes it fails the first time. Um, I clicked it twice, so now it's scanning. Um, this will take quite a while. It can sometimes take up to 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but this will automatically configure a clock speed and voltage curve um, to optimize the efficiency of your graphics card. So in some cases, this even consumes even less power than what it would normally because it tests hundreds of little voltage and clock speed settings automatically for you. Um, but this isn't the entire purpose of this video. Um, we're just trying to get a good manual offset over a clock. But this is also a good teal tool to use if you don't want to run Port Royal over and over again to try to narrow down to a good overclock result. So I'm going to stop this now. I'm just going to go back to my old OC settings. We'll try a 120 on this. We'll just back it down 5, five megahertz. As you can see in this last run, um, I actually had GPU artifacting 
um, I'll put some little snippets of text in the video to show how there was actual artifacting on the ship. Um, you could see like huge lines coming off the ship. That's not a normal part of the benchmark. That was actually the memory getting corrupted on the graphics card, which means my memory clock was probably a little too high um, based on my core clock. Um, I could actually step this core clock down to 100 because we know that passed fine. Um, I can probably run it at 1250 again. But we can just try running it with these settings one more time to see if we get any artifacting. Um, it didn't crash, but our score wasn't the best. Um, it actually was the exact same score we got last time somehow. Um, probably due to the artifact, maybe it penalized us or it slowed down the GPU when it was trying to do error correction. Um, I'm not a programmer of graphics drivers, so I don't really know how they do error correction on the GDDR6 X um, GPUs, like the 3070, it just uses the standard GDDR6. But we'll run it with these settings one more time and see if we get any artifacting again. Um, if not, we'll have to drop this memory clock down to probably 1225 to 1200. Um, and then at the end of this video, I'm going to run a benchmark without recording it because there is a slight performance hit um, to this score when I'm recording this benchmark. But we're not trying to break world records here, any type of record. This is just a tutorial on how to do a manual overclock. As you can see, my score was worse, probably due to some of the thermal throttling. I mean, it was 75 degrees Celsius, but because the GPU was a higher temperature, it probably dropped the clock frequency a little bit, but we were stable with the speed. I'm going to try to squeeze a little bit more out of this manually and see what I can get while recording, and then I'll run it without shadow play on. Um, so after a little bit of tweaking and I ran this without the recording software running, um, I was able to achieve 8,614 for my graphics score. I mean, I could probably squeeze a little bit more out of this, but I believe this was the best stable score I could get on my silicon. Um, keep in mind that everybody's card is going to be a little bit different just within the manufacturing tolerances of how chips are produced. Um, I have a decently bin card. I got some pretty good Samsung memory um, on my card. So I was able to get a pretty high memory overclock and a pretty high core overclock. Um, but let me know in the comments how good you guys can get your cards up to. Um, you could also manually set voltage and frequency curves. Um, this is, <laughs> would take a lot longer to modify. So I just did a offset for everything. Um, a lot of you can play with this as well. I mean, it's going to take a lot longer because there's a lot of points. Um, you probably want to focus on the top 25% of the graph just because these are where the clocks are going to be running um, most of the time during your benchmarks and games. Um, so let me know down in the comments um, if you have a 3070 Founders Edition or even other 3070 cards. Um, let me know how high of an overclock you can get because I know the Founders Edition only allows you to go... 9% over the stock power limit, so I guarantee that's a pretty limiting factor here to get these core clocks stable. Um, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you guys can keep your temperatures low and keep your FPS high.